Hello, you delicious people. It is so amazing to meet people and then have clients in common and then our lives are changing. I'm on sabbatical. She's about to move. And it's just so cool that come what may, we show up. We show up for you. We show up for each other. We show up for the planet. So I am so pleased to have the amazing Dr. Debbie Silver on our show today. She is the founder of the PBT, she'll tell you what those stands for, um, Institute, a transformational psychologist. She's a health mindset and personal development expert and an award-winning speaker, coach, and author of the Amazon number one best-selling book, The Unshakable Woman, Four Steps to Rebuilding Your Body, Mind, and Life After a Life Crisis, and her doctoral study led her to two discoveries about how women experience and heal from betrayal. And based on her findings, we're going to go deep into that, um, along with 27 years of health mindset and lifestyle coaching, she's created a proven approach to help women heal physically, mentally, and emotionally from a life crisis, specializing in betrayal. And we want you all to go to alanapratt.com forward slash Debbie's quiz, and it's D-E-B-I-S, Debbie's quiz, and we'll learn more about what delicious gift that is um, for you. So you're so radiant, and you're so beautiful, and you're about to move. Like, what is your secret? Let's just start, like, chick to chick here, woman to woman. What's your, what is your, uh, your morning practice or your mindfulness practice that allows you to be on an interview, boxes everywhere, about to move? Like, what's your secret? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I mean, it's just so much fun to chat with you. Uh, I, I'm, you know, you know what it is when you just do the work you love. And yeah. one thing evolves into the next and the next. And what happened was, and I can get to the story, all about how the PBT Institute opened, which is a real physical space in New York. But yeah. what happened is it's gotten, thankfully, we've grown and we've gotten so busy and it's wonderful, but it's online. It really is. So between speaking all over the place and being online, and even the local people would prefer to be a, uh, use our online programs. We just don't have the need for the space. So that's what the move is all about. I love it. I love yeah. it. And what do you think that is? Do you think it's just ease? We just have the internet so we don't need to drive? Or do you feel it's something deeper where, I mean, we're dealing with really emotional issues, really places of shame, feeling out of control. Can I really show up in the world again? Do you think maybe it's even safer in their own cocoon of their home to do the work online? What do you think the reason is? I think it's a bit of both. I think that women are so overextended. And here's Mm -hmm. the challenge. We are so capable. So we take so much on until we can't. So one thing is we don't have the bandwidth to go to places and, and put ourselves out even more. We, we have so many pieces of our pie yeah. segmented for different things. So it certainly makes it easier. And also, I mean, my topic is betrayal. So yeah. here's where we need support so desperately, yeah. yet there's so much shame, so yeah. much humiliation, so yeah. much just discomfort in the whole topic that if we can have a little bit of privacy, yeah. it's a little bit more comfortable. And at the very least, if that's the way we're getting the support, that's beautiful. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Tell us about how you came to be so amazing. What was the journey? <laughs> uh, well, oh my goodness. <laughs> journey. I would love to hear. Thank you. Uh, I mean, I've been in health mindset, personal development for ever. And mm-hmm. it was my own betrayals. You know, you don't study something like betrayal unless you have to. Totally. And it was, um, you know, those betrayals that actually sent me right into a PhD program in transpersonal psychology. That's mm. psychology of transformation and human potential. Um, I was blindsided, blindsided. Mm. I mean, that's mm. the word we give betrayal because we never see it coming. We're never betrayed yeah. by people we don't know. It's by, it's by the people we're closest to. And yeah. you know, the first one was my, my family. And as if that wasn't horrible enough, I thought I did the work to heal. But you know how the universe works when you don't quite get the lesson you were meant to learn you get an yeah. opportunity I did yeah. and it was my husband mm. uh, so I, I realized my lesson truly was I was never even on my own to-do list it was all about I have four kids and six dogs and a business and it was always about everybody else and yeah and I and boundaries were crossed and so one of the first things I did was register for this PhD program which is sort of an odd thing to do after a betrayal <laughs> but I realized, no, it's my turn. Yeah, and yeah. it's about me and for the first time. And while I was there, I did a study. And I studied how we experience betrayal. 
What mm -hmm. holds us back? What helps us heal? And I'll be honest with you, I truly was doing that study so that I could heal. That's okay. So Healthy I, selfishness I, is really good. <laughs> and, and so that I could find answers to, to heal. And if I did, I'd be happy to share them, but my intention was to heal. That study made, yeah. it, it actually, it was two that morphed into three discoveries. Okay. And I was so excited mm. that it just, from there, it was too good not to share. So I opened up the PBT Institute and everything mm. else followed. So, mm. I mean, I'm happy to share what the discoveries were. Oh, I would love to. I would love to. And I'd also yeah. love to hear how it affected you in the process, you know, as the discoveries happen. Like, it's one thing to cognitively analyze some information. It's mm. a whole other thing to embody it, right? Well, that's, that's what it was because it really was, it was both simultaneously. Here yeah. I was doing the study and yeah. at the same time, working through my own horrific betrayal. I mean, I was, we're never broken, you know, bent, but yeah. pretty bent. And yeah. Uh, yeah. it was, it was so, it was so horrible. A and anybody who's been through it knows the feeling. Yeah. You know, you're just, you, it's like, it just absolutely takes the wind out of you. you yeah. think, like, who, who have I been with all this time? Mm -hmm. And, and that's exactly, that was the case for me. And I, my husband got out of the house and he was, transforming on his own. I mean, my kids were like, mom, he got rid of his car and his fancy clothes. And I'm like, well, that's nice and all, but I'm, do I'm doing me right now. And, um, and I was changing too at such a, such a crazy speed. And I think a lot of it had to do with what I was learning and what I was yeah. seeing. Yeah. So the, the, first, the first discovery was that um, there's this collection of symptoms, physical, mental, and emotional Mm -hmm. symptoms so common to betrayal that mm -hmm. it's become known as post-betrayal syndrome. Interesting. And we have an assessment on the site to see to what extent people are still struggling. And I'll tell you, it was, we've had to this point, at this point, about 37, 3,800 people who've taken the quiz. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a comment, there's a question that mm -hmm. says, is there anything else you'd like to share? I read every one of them. Yeah. And we've been taught time heals all wounds, or if it's a romantic betrayal, a new relationship will heal it. And I'll tell you, I am seeing every single day, no, that's not true. Yeah. Fist pump. Healing it. Yeah. yeah. Healing yeah. it will heal it. Because yeah. I have yeah. people saying, Alana, I, I, I'll tell you, people say, my betrayal happened 30 years ago. I'm unwilling to trust again. My betrayal happened 40 years ago. I still feel the hate. My yep. betrayal happened 15 years ago. I feel gutted. Yep. I'm yep. getting responses every single day. So we know, you know, you, you think time heals it, but it does not. It does not. So the, the post-betrayal syndrome um, assessment and, and that whole syndrome was one thing that we've learned. But there were two other, just so, these are so exciting. The second one was, I had a feeling that healing from betrayal is so different than healing from death of a loved one, disease. I'd been through those. Mm. And I, I knew it felt different, but I didn't want to assume. Mm -hmm. So I went out to every one of my study participants and I said, those of you who've been through other traumas besides betrayal, does it feel different for you? Is there a difference? And I had, I had a, a participant who had been through a house fire, lost everything in a house fire. Others who'd been through disease, death of a loved one. And unanimously, they said, oh, yes, it's so different. Yeah. Because like, let's take death of a loved one. You mourn the loss. You miss them. You're sad. But you don't question the love. With yeah. betrayal, you question everything. Yeah, including yourself. It, yeah. Including yourself, your sanity, life as you've known it, all of it. Also, because betrayal is intentional, yeah. there's a harder hit there. There's a whole hit totally. to the self. You yeah. know, like you have to rebuild areas that were destroyed. Like a, from, you're reeling from a sense of abandonment, mm -hmm. from rejection, Mm -hmm. You are rebuilding now uh, a sense of your worthiness. Your confidence has been shattered. Self-esteem yep. has been shattered. Trust. You know, when, when you lose someone you love, you, you're not rebuilding those things, but with betrayal you are. So it needed a new, the, the healing needed a new term because healing from all life crises, the sort of the upside of it is post-traumatic growth. And that's a worthy goal. It's wonderful. But it doesn't really involve all of those areas of the self. Mm. that needed to be rebuilt. So I coined a new term, post-betrayal transformation PBT. So mm. healing from betrayal, because it's so different, because it's so unique, it, it needed its own term. And mm. then there was 
the third. This discovery, I mean, in the geekiest way, I thought my head was going to fly off my body. Mm -hmm. um, we discovered that while we can stay stuck for years, decades, a lifetime, and many of us do, if we're going to heal, we're mm -hmm. going to move through now what we know as five proven predictable stages. Mm -hmm. What's so great about that is now we know, not only do we know the five stages, we know physically, mentally, and emotionally what it takes to move from one stage to the next. So now it's almost like, uh, like a, you've seen at an amusement park, like a little ride for, for a child. If they sit on that track, in the car on that track, they will predictably get to the end of the ride. Healing from betrayal is now the same way. If people are willing to do the work, willingness is a huge word. A lot of people aren't willing. We could talk about that. They will predictably get to the end of the ride. Mm. And they will predictably get to this place of post-betrayal transformation. So mm. I'm happy to go through the five stages if you want to. Well, I'm interested in like, um, what is her name? Kubla Ross with the five stages of grief. Um, I'm, I'm really, and, and I respect you and I think you're like friggin' phenomenal, but I'm, I'm always a little bit wary of identities mm -hmm. and proven steps putting people into boxes. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes pe we, we are over identify with our wounds rather than just being, just being right. So while five stages are, and I do, I would like to hear them. Um, I'm okay. If somebody has a quantum leap, like I'm not going to say just because cha -cha -cha, I must wait this long and I must do the, like, maybe it's going to take some people seven, maybe it's going to take some people three. Um, but I love a framework Mm -hmm. But I don't, I, in all honesty, I don't buy into there's only five stages. And if you don't, we're going to fail and we're a loser. Like, no, oh. like I'm open. I'm a little more open. Yeah. Um, and, and the idea of a syndrome to me is a very heavy mm -hmm. word with, with ident like identifying people. And like, I think there's a risk that we keep people in victim bill mm -hmm. when we do that. Um, I want to acknowledge them. I want them to feel heard and validated, but I don't want to label them because what I want them to be is free at choice, conscious beings of choice, right? Mm -hmm. Free of labels, free of syndromes, just happy and thriving. You know what I mean? So well, I, and I so love that you're saying that because the whole idea is we can't change what we're not aware of. So true. if we're, if we're in this toxic soup of just, of just negativity and how did this happen and how did I get here? But we right. recognize it. Now we know, okay, at least I know where I am and, and it makes sense why I feel this way. Now True. here are the steps to get there. Got it. Yeah. The, that I totally agree with. Yeah. Um, I just don't want people to then uh, oh, never think they have another possibility available to them because they've identified with this and now oh. this is their excuse for never trying, never having, never whatever. Cause they're, they, they lock onto it cause they finally have understanding, but they don't keep going. Do you know what well, I, mean? I will tell you, there were three groups who did not heal, and I'll share that because this way, if you're if you're locked on and you're not healing, here's why. Because yeah. we saw three groups who did not heal. The first was if you're numbing, avoiding, distracting. Thank you. Know, you. If you're using yeah. food, drugs, alcohol, work, TV, keeping busy, reckless behavior, anything to numb, avoid something that is too difficult and painful to yep. or face. So yeah. you know, and I get it. We had participants who, they would go to the doctor who would prescribe mood stabilizers, anti-anxiety medications, or they would go, uh, they would drink or use food, anything to distract. And Shop, work. Right, sure. And my kids, I, I'll just uh, focus on my, I mean, you can even just look as, as null as that, but it's still an avoidance. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. And, and we saw that consistently. And, yeah. you know, here I went into this study, and as a researcher, you're not supposed to have any bias, but, you know, I was new, doing my best. And yeah. I assumed, I thought the women who were the hardest hit would grow the least because they had the most to overcome. I was dead wrong. That mm -hmm. had nothing to do with it. If they were doing those things, numbing, avoiding, distracting, in whatever way they chose, they, they didn't heal. So that yeah. was one group. The second group was if they were unwilling to grieve and mourn, you know, and, and heal. Yeah. Yeah. And accept their betrayal. Yeah. Yeah. They did not heal. I agree. Total. Bingo. Yeah. We saw that over and over again because you know what? The, yes, they had a powerful story and I could even show you where this shows up at the stages, but th they were so committed to their story yes. and would not let it go. Yes. And they have every right to hang on to it, but it prevents their healing. We saw yeah. that consistently. So that was yeah. the second group. There was a third group too. And this is, let's say it was a romantic betrayal and it was a, a partner a, in a marriage, whatever. When the betrayer had no consequences, they did not heal. 
And this oh, was the most- Tell me more. Busy. I don't quite understand. So the, yeah, she never got caught is, or she never got caught or whatever happened. Yeah. They did get caught, but there were really no consequences. Oh. This was by far the most physically sick group. And whether it was because of their religion or out of fear, they thought, okay, let me just try to move forward or try to accept, try to forgive. Their bodies could not handle it. Interesting. Because mm. that's actually my personal story. Absolutely zero consequence. But I'm totally on the other side. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I guess that would be a belief that I don't have, like a religious belief or, or something else. Um, Are you, but this would be whether they stayed in a marriage. Oh, 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 got it, got it. Okay, yeah. No consequences. Like, let's say their husband, their husband oh. had an affair. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there really were no consequences. And then they just stayed married uh, and went totally on. Understood. Yeah, yeah, I left. Yeah, understood. Okay, okay. So I created my own new reality. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. But yeah. it's when there were no consequences. Like I said, they were either too afraid to leave or because of religion, they, they, whatever the religion was, the religion did not support them leaving. Understood. And pain is punishment, self-punishment. So that makes total sense that they would stay sick or something physical would happen. Yeah. The Same. most sick out of all yeah. three groups. Yep, that makes yeah. total sense. Whoa, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, and I love the idea, um, just to remind the listeners as well, is when you're too stuck in your story, that's in your mind. We don't reach coherence through thinking, you know, coherence, harmony, oneness, mm-hmm. right? We don't, we reach that through feeling, mm-hmm. not thinking. And so if they're going to just keep spinning in their story and not grieve or feel, they're never going to reach their heart again. It makes total yeah, sense. 100%. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. And as you were learning these three um, ways of being that didn't work, mm-hmm. you got some really good feedback. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go. Right. And uh, yeah. I'm going to, wow. Okay. So yeah. So what are these, um, these stages that you see people go through? I'm sure. curious. And, and here's the thing. It, the length of time it takes really varies according to someone's willingness, according to their resources, according to their level of support. Yep. These are the stages they're going to move through. But yep. the time depends. Sure. That's, sure. That's a whole different thing. Anyway, yeah, okay. yeah. The, the first is like a setup stage. And, and this is what I saw with every single participant, me included. If you imagine four legs of a table, the four legs being physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. What yeah. I saw with every single woman was a real heavy lean on the physical and the mental and really neglecting or just not paying much attention to the emotional and the spiritual. This means we're really good at thinking and doing and not as great at feeling and being, which is what you just said. Yeah, right? well, our society doesn't teach us how to navigate intense emotions. Mm-hmm. They, they, they even tell us that emotions are bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, we haven't been raised to lean in, get curious, and no one's taught us how to process it. That's why I love the work I do. I'm just like, where's the uh, fire? Shall we sit now? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I love going in there because I don't. they're plenty smart. I don't need to help them there. But this is where they're, yeah. That's the scary Toddler, I so get it, yeah. Yeah, but but also what happens is when you're in that state, you've also turned down your intuition. So I heard from everybody, I kind of thought something wasn't right, but I was too busy. I kind of felt like something was off, but I just didn't pay attention. Exactly. Saw that every time. So stage two, we're blindsided. This is the breakdown of the body, the mind, the worldview. This is by far the scariest stage. The breakdown of the body. You've ignited the stress response right here. Here's where you just learned about your betrayal. Stress response is ignited. So we are headed for just about every stress related symptom, illness, condition, disease. Your mind, breakdown of the mind, your your mind is in a complete state of chaos and overwhelm. Mm -hmm. You cannot wrap your mind around what just happened. This does not make any kind of sense at all. Yeah. And there's a breakdown of the worldview. That's your mental model. This person's safe. These are the rules. This is how the world works. And in a moment, it's shattered. Yep, but a yep. new, a new uh, mental model hasn't been constructed yet. So this Correct. is terrifying. So here we're just free-flowing. Here's yep. truly where the bottom bottoms out on us. And you know, one of my participants said, you know what it feels like? It felt like every negative emotion you can experience and losing a child in a crowd like that at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And just yet awful. it's so wild um, because one of the ways I took my power back is that, you know, I could still be a victim and say I'm blindsided. But if I really told the truth, I, there was an inkling. There was an inkling, but I wasn't willing to be brave enough. I wasn't willing to feel. I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know what to do about how, what I felt. But at least I could own that I'm not crazy, that there were signals going off. I just didn't know what to do about it so that I didn't have to be this victim that I was blindsided. It's that I was only seeing like half the picture, Mm-hmm. And now that I was willing to own and see the whole picture, 
uh, I, there were many signals. And then you can, then you know that you can recreate a life where you can take care of yourself and can trust yourself and can trust the universe again. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love that you said that about knowing that you're not crazy because that's how we feel. We're like, I'm a great person. How did I not know any of this? How did I not see any of this? And it's so common. That's so common. Yeah. So if the bottom were to bottom out on you, what would you do? You would grab hold of whatever you could to stay safe and stay alive. And that's stage three. Survival instincts emerge. The most practical stage. If you can't help me get get out of my way, where will I live? How can I survive this experience? How will I feed my kids? Whatever it is. Yeah. Entirely practical. This is the stage I see so many people getting stuck in because Mm. we, we are reeling from our experience. But then when we hang out here too long, we start thinking, well, maybe they're right. Maybe it's true. Maybe I belong here. Maybe I should plant roots here. And like energy attracts like energy. So now before long, you're attracting people and circumstances and opportunities into your life that confirm this belief. Yeah. So we start staying very rooted. And then if that wasn't bad enough, we start having all these small self benefits. Like you get to be right. You get your powerful story. You get someone to blame. You get, uh, you don't have to do the hard work of learning to trust again. Do I trust you? Do I trust you? I forget it. I won't trust anybody. You know, so now we have these, we look at them as benefits. But if if we had a glimpse of what was available to us, which you know, when we're willing to give up those small self benefits for ones that feel so much better. Yes. Uh, right. Well, they're so, yeah, they're so miswired thinking safety is in controlling your outside cir- circumstances. It's totally fear-based and survival-based. That's not where safety Absolutely. comes from. It comes from the inside. So if they could see that they're actually creating hell for themselves to try to maintain long-term and things are going to get worse. But then again, you say to somebody who's terrified and grasping for dear life from the outside circumstances, no, 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 safety's on the inside. They'll be like, later. Like, they don't want to do that work. Yeah, yeah. Right? absolutely. But- and they have, they're so happy and content, not happy. They're so committed to staying with their story. There's a woman in my office the other day. I mean, she came in, the arms folded and whatever. She goes, I really want to work with you. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, you sure look like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Because you'd rather, you, you have a powerful story. Yeah, you'd rather and- be right. You'd rather be right. So, and you're completely entitled, but you're never going to heal that way. It's oh just my not- God. Can I be so like vulnerable, Debbie? I remember for years, because my court battle itself was like 12, 13 years and then getting over it was like another whatever, right? So quite a big chunk of my life. So when someone would say, so how's your business? Great. How's your son? Super good. How's your ex? It was like, I would say to the orchestra and begin. And I would <laughs> like get this up and I would milk it and I would get the attention. And then I started to notice that I was doing it. And initially I just judged myself. So that didn't do any good. Mm-hmm. And then I started to notice without the judgment and a little more compassion, look what you're doing. You're keeping this alive. And then I started to ask the questions, what else is possible? And then that really set me free. But I was totally doing that. And we yeah. all, you know, and, and it serves us on some level. And I think a lot of it has to do with, well, there's so much fear in that that feels so, it feels comfortable, even though it stinks. It, it's like the pink fuzzy slippers versus the great pair of heels, right? <laughs> But we don't know what else there is. But the, right. here's the thing. If you're willing to give that up, if you're willing to mourn the loss, if you're willing to grieve, and it truly is a grieving process. Yes. I mean, what you get instead, first of all, yes, you get a way, you get a story, but it's a way better story. Yeah. You get to be the hero or the heroine of your story. Totally. Oh you my get, God. You get opportunities coming at you that you never had access to when you were hanging on to your victim weight. It's, it's, I look at it like a 500 pound boulder you're walking around with. Your arms can't carry, your eyes can't see, you yeah. know, if that's what you do. But when you put it down, you have access to all that. I finally, I'm like, I'll be 50 in January. I finally feel held by the divine, like an embodiment, like for realsies. Yeah. And I'm not vagina cleansed, uh, clenched, three steps ahead, trying to be safe all the time. That was decades. Mm. Like to have... Yeah. Peace in your skin. Know you're enough. I mean, I'm a hot mess where I'm a hot mess. <laughs> I'm still, yeah. you know, and I'm like badass where I'm badass. Like, okay. But like to be at peace inside, like that is, nobody can take that away ever, no matter what happens. But I'll tell you, that comes from doing the work that you've done. Oh, and yeah. I, I have yet to see someone stronger than someone who has healed from betrayal because you're rebuilding everything. Yeah. Yeah. 
and you're making your own rules. You're really recreating an entirely new self. I, you know, there's a concept I teach it just, it's death and rebirth. You yeah, truly have said. to die to the yeah. life you've known. The, and the, the whole identity. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, you can't take that with you. And I'm sure you take the good things, but you cannot take the parts that didn't serve into yeah. this next version of you, yeah. you know, or there's no transformation there. And that's why, you know, transformation is a, it's a messy, sticky process. It's not pretty. It's, no. But when you do it, you, you truly die to the life you've known in order to embrace this new. I life. so agree with you. I love this because we both, well, you're the doctor, but we both know that energy can't be created or destroyed. You can't actually get rid of the old identity. You can't get rid of the fear. You can't get rid of the shame. You can't get rid of the sadness, but you can sit in it, feel it, and go through processes that I'm sure you teach and I teach to literally, like alchemy, transform that energy into a new energy, a new capacity, bravery, compassion, strength, mm -hmm. inner resilience, trust, all these other things. We, the only way we got there, we didn't just go pick them up at the grocery store. You didn't just give them to us like a gift and we like ate them or something. No, no, they're already inside us, dormant. Mm -hmm. And they must, like iron, get stronger in the fire. You must go through the process. They will transform, and they're yours. No one can ever take them away. Mm -hmm. You you earn them. You transformed. I'm so grateful. Like, I could literally now, if I saw my ex, just be super calm and super grateful. It took me a long-ass time to get there. Yeah, but that, that's what you needed to get to this, this place that you're at. So, yeah, so that's what happens when we're willing to let go of those small self-benefits for uh, and grieve the more, you know, more than the loss of what we wanted and didn't get and all of those things. Yeah. We move to stage four. And here's yeah. finding and adjusting to a new normal. Yeah, here's yeah. Where we're like, our old normal doesn't exist anymore. It's no longer an option. Yeah. And this is like, if you've ever moved into a new house, condo, apartment, office, whatever, you know, your stuff isn't all there. It's not cozy, but it's going to be okay. And when you're in that stage and in that state, you're kind of telling your body, we're not, the stress response is still ignited, but you're not in major crisis anymore yes but here's also where you're you're really changing the rules about friendships if yeah. someone was really a lame friend here's where you're like you know what mm -mm -mm. you're you're starting to rewrite yep. the rules right here yeah when you're in that stage for a while and you're like okay this new space works i got it i can make this work this feels okay i can breathe a little bit again yeah you slowly move into the fifth most beautiful stage and that's healing rebirth and a new worldview so mm -hmm. healing the body starts to heal you've turned down the stress response yes. you also didn't so you're not breaking down the body now you're actually healing you also didn't have the bandwidth for eating well or exercising that was like the last thing on your mind you were mm -hmm. surviving now you yes. want to nurture yourself now you want to love yourself care for yourself your mind you're creating a new set of beliefs based on where you've been and what you see so clearly now. Yeah. And your worldview that was completely destroyed, you have a new worldview based yeah. on, on this, this 30,000 foot view of your life. Yeah. And because of that, that table from the beginning where we were only prioritizing the physical and the mental, right. now we are solidly grounded because we are heavily focused on the emotional and the spiritual too. Yeah. I so love your saying that because I don't believe it's mind first. I believe it's heart first. I believe the unity of heart and mind starts with the heart. That if we try to figure shit out in our brain, it's scarcity based and based on the past and based on the fears and all that kind of stuff. So the new mindset for me uh, doesn't happen. It's almost like an ego mind turns into a divine mind when it's sourced in harmony and unity with the coherence of the heart. So it has to be prioritizing emotions. It has to be prioritizing spirituality. And then it's not like you think you got to do 10 more affirmations. It's like, you know what you know, and that informs the mind. And then you take actions and speak from that place. You don't have to try. You don't have to remember. It's just natural. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, because I work with the most brilliant women, they have the hardest time because yeah, their mind lying on the mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's always served them. That's yeah. been their tool of choice. And now here you have to bypass the cognitive mind. That has nothing to do with this. Well, it triggers more friggin' fears for them too. So, well, mm -hmm. God, we got to feel that too. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. So when yeah. they're able to, which it's sound, and to them, they cannot buy into the idea that this is a heart thing and the heart needs healing. Absolutely. I love that you said that. It's so true because that was their tool. Their mind was always the tool that got them. For survival, but not for thriving, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Yeah. What do you, um, cause I would say that's maybe like a fourth reason, or maybe it's going to be compiled into the three reasons or whatever, but maybe letting go of the story. But to me, it's like, if they're unwilling to value their emotions as much as they value their mind, if they're unwilling to value their femininity as much as their masculine drive, if they're unwilling to value the unknown of possibility as much as the known uncertainty, if they're unwilling to be that brave and relax into that kind of harmony and balance inside, they'll never get there. Ever. And I love that you said that about the unknown, the death and rebirth process. You yeah. have to be completely willing to let go of everything without any, uh, any guarantee, any yep. understanding of yep. anything that's going to show up. And that yep. is, it's like you are just saying, whatever it is, I'm going to heal. Yep. I'm moving forward. I'm working towards it without any knowledge yep. or understanding of yep. anything that's going to yep. show up. Yeah. I don't know what your beliefs are, your spirituality, religion, whatever it is. I completely honor it. Um, I, I just believe there's a presence, I guess we could call it. Um, and we could call it God. We could call it the universe. We could call it the field. I'm a total quantum physics geek. I love to, I love to prove the science of everything I'm intuitively feeling. But like I choose that my partner is the divine. That's my partner. Mm-hmm. And that means I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> it means I have choice. I can respond. I get my say. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not going to stress myself out with willpower trying to control a world that I'm not in control of. Um, I just really surrender that I'm, I'm in a dance with evolution. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to slow down and listen to that spark within me that is for me. I do believe that. But the way I listen from fear, I'm going to hear a very different re- you know, reaction or a voice that I'm going to hear when I've slowed down and I'm in coherence in my heart, what I'm going to hear. But that's been my best way of, like, of course, I would love hot man in my bed, ha, mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay in my aloneness. Like, I'm not lonely in my aloneness. I'm at choice in my aloneness because I feel so full and connected to this relationship I have with the divine. Yeah. Um, I, I love that you brought up spirituality too. That was another theme. Yeah. What I saw with, with the majority yeah. of the participants, they, some of them, if they, uh, and depending on, and no matter, really it was regardless of their religion, if yeah. their religion didn't serve them, yep. they, they would either move towards the spiritual uh, aspect of their religion or many abandoned religion completely. Interesting. If they for weren't religious at all, yeah. they moved towards spirituality. And it was really for two reasons. It was they needed to feel connected to something right. other than them. That was number one. And this was a big part of the trust issue because they, they, they figured, well, I can't trust my betrayer. I don't even trust myself. Let me just trust in the universe. Yes. And that was a real consistent theme that I saw. That's beautiful. So thank you for those five stages. I'm in complete agreement with them, um, even though I was feisty at the beginning. (laughs) So thank you for explaining those to me. Um, That's what I find with my life and my clients as well. What's happened to you with your life and your love and your connection to spirituality? What has been the outcome for you as a a woman, a mother? Yeah, it's been just such an an unpredictable outcome and incredible at the same time. Yeah. Um, My, so, so I remember again, I was one of those people too. I was, I was spiritual for 10 years and um, I saw a spiritual counselor. I remember because I was like, I needed help with this. I didn't trust my husband. I didn't trust myself. Let me trust. She's got a, you know, a, a hotline to the divine here. Let me just, you know, meet with her. And she said to me, Debbie, you have no idea how you planned this planned. Yeah. Oh yeah. The two of you were in such cahoots. He needed something so big so he could crash and burn and then become the the father, the husband, the best friend he signed up to be. And you needed something so catastrophic so you could just go to the depths of despair and then heal. And from that place, you are going to be teaching. You're going to have a center. You're going to be writing books on this. I was like, you're so crazy. Every (laughs) single thing she said happened. So, yeah, every single thing. So he being a very extreme personality, uh, I had him see somebody as well, spiritual, you know, same thing. And um, he walks in to the first appointment. And now he has never spoken to this person, never met him anything. And he walks in, he goes, you were such a, and he just gave a whole list of things. So he nailed him from the beginning. But he said to me, we've become great friends. And he goes, Debbie, I've been at this for 26 years. I have the spiritual counselor. I have never seen anybody go from one extreme to the other. 
so significantly. Mm. And a big part of it was, we, of course we had to speak because of the kids. So we were. And I said, listen, I, I, it's all about me now. And if, if anything, it, we're going to even be friends, I'm very spiritual. So you should know what I'm into. All the stuff that you mocked all those years. Tell me what to read. So I would tell him and he would start reading and he took to it like crazy. Wow. And, and my, then my kids would say, mom, he's, he signed up for hospice training and he's going into New York City and he's feeding the homeless. And he like took it to a whole other level. So we, we became friends again. Wow. And um, not long ago, we got remarried. No way! <laughs> yeah. No fucking way! And the, shit. the crazy thing is our kids were our bridal party. No so, way! New rings, new vows, new dress. Oh my God. Yeah. Holy crappers. But here's the thing. Wow. Both of us, there is nothing of the old him, or I would never have done this, sure. nothing of the old me, nothing right. of the old marriage, nothing of the old family. Wow. I'll tell you, I mean, now I have four, my kids, they're four best friends because they've been through war together. Yeah, exactly, right? Wow. And they've seen the worst of you and the best of you and that you did what it took and you put one foot in front of the other and you did your work, both of you. And it was really important to me that how, uh, my kids' respect was the utmost. I mean, that's really what mattered. And I was so worried if, if I do marry him again, what are they going to think? Are they going to think I just... You know, I don't know. I, I was so concerned about that. And yeah. what was so wonderful was they said to me in the very beginning, mom, we're behind you, whatever you want to do. And mm. that if I tell you what that did for me, yeah. um, because sure. then it was like, okay, now I have, I have the space to yeah. figure out what I want to do. And I truly took that time to, to heal. And I remember they, they would just keep reporting like, he's so different. He's so, you know, we go in the car with him and he has Wayne Dyer on. And, and he's, he's handing out Wayne Dyer DVDs in the, to the homeless in the city. <laughs> it's like, he just took it to a whole other level. And, uh, and I just, that was, I needed that time in that space. Yeah, I get that. I mean, we've been together since 1984, so it's a, it was a long time. You are so beautiful. I didn't know. That's a long time, girl. Long time. Wow. This, this, is, this is the guy I met back then so much better. Wow, of course. It's so beautiful. I, um, it's really great for the listeners to know it could go either way and that they're still okay. Like it could be that you never spoke to him again and you found somebody else and he found somebody else and whatever. And that would have just been perfect for whatever your journey is about mm-hmm. or that you would have done your work and come back totally together and better than ever. Um, and that neither is better or worse. Oh, the I, thing yeah. Is that you did your work and you just let go. And That's it. A new reality, unattached. And then why? And I, I, love, I love that you brought that up because it's so true. My work is helping the person who's been betrayed get to their physical, mental, emotional, psychological, spiritual best from that place. If they, if they want and if that other person steps up, then, yep. then who knows? But very often people come to see me and they say, I want, I want to get back with my partner. I'm like, well, listen, my job is you. And they get to yep. that space and then they're like, I'm not the least bit interested. Yep. And that's okay. That's all right. right. Because in your situation, your partner did the work, mm-hmm. right? Not always will the other person do the work. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So it's okay no matter how it works out. It wasn't one is successful and one is not. And the, no. main, the main is this relationship with yourself on all these levels. I love it. I so love it. And I love your happy ending. I think that's really amazing. <laughs> I don't have the same happy ending. I have a different happy ending. And so, well, so. I'll tell you with my, like with my family betrayal, that was a, you know, I wish you well, I'm moving on. Right. And, and a very different experience. Got so it. So you don't what, speak with it, them. Oh, no. But it's what's best for you, what you need. Right. Uh, where you are in your growth. Totally. Because a lot of people, they just, you know, of course, they'll just blame you. They'll take no responsibility. They're, you're not working with anything then. There's no, nothing to no. work with. Correct. Yeah, exactly. So you just have to create on your own. Mm-hmm. All in a beautiful world. Better than before. Yeah, I totally agree. Oh my goodness. Well, I think we could talk for hours. This is awesome. Um, I'm thrilled that you are just going with the flow, that your online world is thriving, that you're moving your office back home. I'm thrilled that you're going back home to your husband who's done the work like you've done the work. I'm thrilled that you're making such a difference with with humanity. Um, What would be your last 
words to listeners from this heart that is now integrated into your divine mind, literally the embodiment of the work that you teach, what would you like to say to complete the interview? Uh, you know, I would say I understand how much it hurts and how painful it is and how dark it looks. But I promise you, put one foot in front of the other and just don't stop because post-betrayal transformation is available. I mean, you've done it. I've done it. it it's, it's not reserved for anyone. It's available yeah. to anyone who just wants to do the work. Yeah, I totally agree. And I would, I, I'm in 100% agreement and I would simply add two elements that I think are super important is not the strength of our mind or our willpower, but the courage of our heart. And that takes a bravery and a humility to open and feel. And that to me has made all the difference. Uh, for the success in my healing. So you're awesome. And you're on the East Coast, right? I am. Well, not for long. I have so many of my kids moving out the, to the other coast. So oh. I'm following behind them. We'll go by it. for a while and then we'll see. <laughs> All right. Sounds awesome. Well, I look forward to the chance to actually give you a hug in person. Thank you for your time. Let me say officially goodbye to you when we're off air here, but thank you all for watching. And again, we've got alanapratt.com forward slash Debbie's quiz, D E B I S quiz. And just give them a little taste of what that is so they can all go to your site and take that quiz now. Sure. That's the quiz to see to what extent are you struggling with post-betrayal syndrome? And it is certainly not to keep you stuck. It's so you know what is lingering in the wake of your betrayal so you could face it, feel it, heal it. Face it, feel it, heal it. Slap your ass. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Until next time on Intimate Conversations, we love you with all our hearts. Mwah.